What is up, Web3? Chris me, Chris Atumans, right here at a BitGet for a UNICEF event. And right with me, I mean, right beside me is the CEO of BitGet, Miss Gracie Chen. How are you today? Congratulations at first. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Can you please explain briefly what blockchain for her is so it's a csr program that we had since january 2024 mm -hmm. i launched it during the world economic forum in davos and since then number one we committed 10 million usdt or usdt equivalent of uh, fiat and the cryptocurrency in order to drive the initiative forward uh, in order to help uh, females to know more about our space and elevate as managers as leaders etc um, so it's a very general educational uh, program, but targeted to females. Today, we are launching the partnership with UNICEF. As mm -hmm. you all know, UNICEF is targeted to uh, children and younger teenagers, etc. So for our partnership with UNICEF, it's very much like a subset of blockchain for her or mm -hmm. a, a subset of the audience that blockchain her for her was targeting, but at a younger age. Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, uh, this partnership, it's a three-year partnership that we have together with UNICEF. And it's under the uh, Game Changers Coalition that, that initiated by UNICEF. And we want to uh, educate the younger ladies, especially in terms of uh, more blockchain and financial literacy. Thank you so much. And how can this initiative inspire more partnerships between Web3 companies and global organizations like UNICEF? In terms of inspiration that we are giving to others, I'm, I'm guessing, well, it depends on which what's the value you are holding if there is a minority that you you guys are you know think uh, are important for us for big we think there are two minorities in the populations that are kind of lack of web3 knowledge and the financial literacy specifically youth and mm -hmm. females and that's why we have two csr programs targeting these two audiences uh blockchain for her blockchain for youth i'm leading lots of conversations around blockchain for her myself uh, because i am very passionate about this project other than just you know running uh, the business at biget so for uh, again for blockchain for her um, we had lots of commitments we've done lots of uh, activities online and offline already we hope to elevate our influence together with the unicef collaboration then for others um, i think maybe same mindset who do you who do you identify as a group that needs more help and find the right organization maybe it's uh, it's under un uh, it's not necessarily unicef un has lots of organizations about climate change about you know various global issues that we are facing as human beings or uh, with some web web3 targeted groups like for example blockchain for her actually work with uh, shifi summit with mm -hmm. women in investment women in web3 like all sorts of organizations that we're talking to i'm also uh, talking to certain you know non web3 organizations for example i'm a i'm a mit graduate and there is an organization in our mit sloan business school called mm -hmm. swim which is sloan women in management mm -hmm. i was part of that program as well. I was the co-president for the MIT Stone Blockchain Club. Like all these student initiatives and clubs, we're also interested in talking to them. So again, it depends what you want and what, what's the problem you want to solve. Thank you so much, Ms. Grace. And what does BitGet hope to achieve through the partnership with UNICEF? And how did that collaboration come about? As we mentioned earlier, we have always had an interest to drive more adoption for females. Mm -hmm. And we've had blockchain for her since January 24 already. It's been one and a half years. But we also realized just with Biget, the influence is limited. And that's why about you know one year ago when some of our teammates met UNICEF team. Actually, UNICEF have more than, I think, one, 190 offices around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, this time we are looking, we are working with uh, UNICEF Luxembourg, which is a relatively small office. But along the way, we actually talked to many offices mm -hmm. under UNICEF, like China team, like this and that team. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just decided to work with L Luxembourg more, although it's actually with help from all the UNICEF, not not all, but but many UNICEF officers. But basically, as they also mentioned that they are a smaller team and that's why they move fast. They also worked a lot with fintech companies before, so mm -hmm. they understand what we want to achieve. 
better in that sense. For Biget, it's UNICEF that we are announcing today. But this weekend, we actually have another big partnership that we're announcing in another beautiful city in Europe. Mm -hmm. So definitely tuning for that. That's not a CSR program. It's more of sports um, kind of organization that we're working with. And Biget has always been actively, you know, working with various organizations in order to drive more mass adoption, especially when it comes to sports partnership. We partnered with Juventus in 2021, mm -hmm. Leo Messi in 2022 before the World Cup, and La Liga in 2024. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one, although it's not a football sport team or individual that we're working with, but it's also a pretty big organization. It's actually in their own domain, it's the largest mm -hmm. organization. But you will find out very soon, yeah, in a few days' time. Do you have any message for the people who are supporting blockchain for her? So, so number one, blockchain for her, although it has the name for her, we actually also invite him and them to join our community. We have different events. Uh, in Usually, they co coexist with certain bigger conferences mm -hmm. uh, in for example Singapore in Malaysia mm -hmm. in uh, in in Dubai etc that we just realized in those kind of events there are more people coming mm -hmm. to gather in this city for this crypto conference or blockchain week and and having a, a separate side event can be quite fun and mm -hmm. uh, uh, more efficient for them to make networks, to uh, just enjoy their life in general, enjoy some good food, enjoy some good conversations. Definitely tune in to those events and hopefully I'll see you at our next Blockchain for Her event. And this message is again, not for her, but for him and them. Thank you so much. And last question, what do you think is the future of money? Future of money? Oh, that's a good one. Well, immediately in my head, in my mind, there is like this picture of how when we, well, I mean, human being, when we were at the, the stone age, maybe mm -hmm. when we were a monkey, etc., and how we use maybe stones as, as a money. And uh, uh, later on, there are other money kind of uh, uh, goods such as shells, mm -hmm. such as paper money and later credit card. And I def definitely think Bitcoin is the future of money in that sense. I actually have a pillow that mm -hmm. exactly, you know, pictured this evolution of money. Uh, I do think Bitcoin and uh, cryptocurrency is the future. If you think about in the future, how, you know, AI might be working for us or with us. And if AI is getting paid, it has to be cryptocurrency because AI can't go to a bank, bank to open a bank account. Mm -hmm. So I think looking at the future, uh, cryptocurrency is definitely a part of that society, is, mm -hmm. especially as the future of money. Thank you, Miss Gracie. And I hope you will have a plan to get a chapter in the Philippines as well. Yes, I, I do want to visit there as soon as possible. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is me, Chris at Simmons. I hope you get a lot of insights from her. And again, please do check blockchain for her. See you again on the next episode of FOMO, the future of money.